So what are we doing, folks? What are we doing right now? And the angels fell from heaven, came down from the top of Mount Hermon to defile man and the creatures of the earth. It goes something like that. Anyway, they've done it. They have finally unleashed their army of mutant mosquitoes upon us all. Well, upon Florida anyway. The biotech firm Oxitech has released its genetically modified mosquitoes in the Florida Keys with the goal of suppressing wild, disease-carrying mosquito populations in the region. This is the first time genetically modified mosquitoes have been released in the U.S. Every time I hear that phrase first time, I get worried because this ain't the first time I've heard this. And I want to discuss this because it has become very apparent they are just going full sci-fi horror right now. GMO mosquitoes, what's next? Maybe it's time we take a closer look at the making of a mutant. See if we can find out the secret of the ooze. It seems very apparent that we have reached another point in our timeline where it's like open season on experiments. It's like, forget testing. Let's just do it and see what happens. There are several articles on these mosquitoes. This one comes from Nature.com, dated May 3rd, 2021. First genetically modified mosquitoes released in the United States. Biotech firm Oxitech launches controversial field test of its insects in Florida after years of pushback from the residents and regulatory complications. You see that statement right there should tell you the amount of disregard these companies and the government have for citizens. I mean, who is supposed to be running this country, us or them? If people who live in a certain area are saying, no, we don't want mutant mosquitoes flying around here, you don't do it. What the hell? People should be able to decide what is best for them, not their government. Pesky Floridians, they're trying to hold back progress. No, they are trying to hold back evil. See, most of us, at least most of the people I know, live by this thing called ethics. And for some strange reason, we can omit ethics if it has anything to do with medicine or curbing diseases. After a decade of fighting for regulatory approval and public acceptance, a biotechnology firm has released genetically engineered mosquitoes into the open air in the United States for the first time. The experiment launched this week in the Florida Keys over the objections of some local critics. Critics? test a method for suppressing populations of wild Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, which can carry diseases such as Zika, Dengue, Chikungunya, and Yellow Fever. Right, all of those named diseases are not prevalent in the U.S., and more than half the time, the few cases that do hit the U.S. is of travelers who are coming from places where these diseases are more prevalent. So my question is, why does this need to be done now, here, in a place where it's not much of a problem as in other places? What's the deal here? Oxitech, the firm based in Abingdon, UK, that developed the mosquitoes, has previously field tested the insects in Brazil, Panama, and the Cayman Islands in Malaysia. Again, why is this being done here, especially when they're has already been testing done in these other countries. Experiment launched. Aedes aegypti makes up about 4% of the mosquito population in the Keys. 
a chain of tropical islands off the southern tip of Florida. But it is responsible for practically all mosquito-borne disease transmitted to humans in the region, according to the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District, which is working closely with Oxitec on the project. Researchers and technicians working on the project will release bioengineered male Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, which don't bite, to mate with the wild female population, responsible for biting prey and transmitting disease. The genetically engineered males carry a gene that passes to their offspring and, and kills female progeny in early larval stages. Male offspring won't die, but instead will become carriers of the gene and pass it to future generations. As more females die, the Aedes aegypti population should dwindle. You know, I'm not a fan of mosquitoes, but that actually sounds kind of cruel. By the way, before I go further, there was an abstract also published on Nature.com under Scientific Reports. Transgenic Aedes aegypti mosquitoes transfer genes into a natural population. In an attempt to control the mosquito-borne disease, yellow fever, dengue, chikungunya, and Zika fevers, a strain of transgenetically modified Aedes aegypti mosquitoes containing a dominant lethal gene has been developed by a commercial company, Oxitec. If lethality is complete, releasing this strain should only reduce population size and not affect the genetics of the target populations. Evidently, rare viable hybrid offspring between the release strain and the, uh, the Jokobina population are sufficiently robust to be able to produce in nature. The release strain was developed using a strain originally from Cuba, then outcrossed to a Mexican population. Thus, Jokobina Aedes aegypti are now a mix of three populations. It is unclear how this may affect disease transmission or affect other efforts to control these dangerous vectors. These results highlight the importance of having in place a genetic monitoring program during such releases to detect unanticipated outcomes. Or we could just choose not to genetically alter things. Because the problem is, although this method has been shown to reduce the deadly mosquito populations, listen to what it says in the very same abstract. If lethality is complete, such releases should result only in population reduction and not affect the genetics of the target population. However, it is known that under laboratory conditions, 3 to 4 percent of the offspring from matings of OX513A with wild type do survive, do survive, do survive to adulthood although they are weak and it is not known if they are fertile. You know, I could have sworn, you know, I could have sworn Jurassic Park was released in the 90s, man. And Malcolm was right. Life finds a way. And these Educated scientists shouldn't need a dinosaur movie to tell them that. They know. They know about the possibilities and they go ahead and do it anyway. I guess they saw how half the country lined up for the experiment. And they said, well, hell, if people will take that stuff, they won't mind us doing a little something with these mosquitoes over here. It's just a tiny mosquito. An itty bitty one. You won't even notice. Many of the concerns stem from the uncertainty of a new technology, says biologist Natalie Koffler, who has been following this project for years. Oxitec has been engaging with the Florida Keys community to provide answers to queries. They explained, for instance, the very low likelihood that female mosquitoes with the lethal gene could reproduce. But many people don't have confidence in what they're hearing because it's coming from a company, says Koffler. Hmm, I wonder why they think that. Koffler is hoping that enough data are gathered to assess the mosquito's impact, including on other species in the Keys and local ecosystems, and that it's done in a way that's transparent and in a way that can make some community members feel better about the whole situation. Oxitec employees have taken precautions against vandalism by placing their mosquito boxes on private, fenced-in properties and not disclosing their precise locations to the public. So there you have it. And the effects of this, I guess we'll have to wait and see. 
boy, these experiments. This is a bad time to be a lab animal or a mosquito or a person. There is much more to come, everyone. Please stay tuned. I will be discussing the experiment very soon on the website. So be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. Be very aware of what's going on right now, folks. God be with us all in these trial times. And as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay unmodified, and I'll talk to you all soon.